Hello everyone, I'm Hayley and welcome to today's session on presenting data with ArcGIS dashboards. Today I'm going to introduce to you ArcGIS dashboards and how this application may be of use to your organisation. Next, we will get started on how to build and optimise your dashboard using a combination of elements, including maps, charts and indicators. Then we'll move on to explore some of the new functionalities of the ArcGIS dashboard's beta release. This will include getting you started with authoring arcade expressions in your dashboard to unlock further configuration capabilities. So, what is an ArcGIS dashboard? You may have already come across this application as it was previously named Operations Dashboard. It is an online application which enables you to present data in easy to read formats where all key information can be seen on a single screen. This facilitates quick and easy understanding of data trends. Charts, indicators and gauges summarise complex data and enable smarter decision making. The practical uses of dashboards is very broad. From the real-time monitoring of fire service response operations to organisations informing the public, for instance, many of the COVID-19 response dashboards you may have seen. Dashboards are very versatile and are of valuable use to many business operations. To launch the application, you will need to sign in to your ArcGIS Online account using your normal login credentials. From here, you'll be able to navigate to the waffle icon in the top right hand corner and open dashboards. This option automatically launches the application in your internet browser, where you have the options to create a new dashboard or edit your existing work. Today I'll be showing you how to configure this dashboard using recent earthquake data which is available through the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. This real-time dashboard could be used by an organisation who provide humanitarian aid, allowing them to track earthquakes and respond to res disasters more quickly. First we'll be creating a basic dashboard and then we'll move on to discuss how we can enhance it further using more advanced settings. This is my blank project template and I'm going to begin by editing my dashboard settings. This is where I'm able to pre-configure the look and feel of my dashboard. To add elements to my dashboard, I navigate to the plus icon in the top right hand corner. Here I can add a pre-configured map from my ArcGIS online account. Next, I'm going to use a list element. Lists can be used to show information from a feature field. In this case, I only want to display events with a magnitude greater than 4.5. I would also like my events to appear with the most recent at the top, so here I can sort by event time in sending order. Next, I can configure the items displayed in my list by using the drop down arrow in the item template. I'm going to select location, but I've also already configured what I'd like to include, so I'm going to paste that option in. Here I have the option to customise this. A serial chart visualises one or more series of data points along a horizontal X and vertical Y axis. I can filter results for only a magnitude of above 4.5. I am also able to display events that have occurred within the last three days. Thank you. 
One of the category fields will be event time and the other will be magnitude. Although a bar graph can be very useful in some circumstances, I would like this to be a line graph, however, showing each earthquake individually. Therefore, I will minimise the line opacity. I also have an option to add axis titles. The final element that I'd like to add in and show you is the indicator. I'm going to use this to show a count of earthquakes of a specified magnitude. I'm also able to give this a title. And configure this here. I would also like to repeat this step for different thresholds, so I can use the duplicate option. This will save me some time before I go ahead and make those small changes off camera. I have configured my additional indicators and added some finishing touches such as a header, subtitle and legend so people can quickly and easily understand my dashboard. To move elements around you use the drag option here. It is also useful to note that you can group elements by holding down the shift key as you move your elements. This is what I have done for my indicators here. Also remember to save your dashboard before closing it. Next, I would like to talk you through how we could use some of the more advanced settings within dashboards, including filters, map actions and URL parameters. In some cases, it can be useful to have your dashboard automatically focus on details of the latest event or a particular asset. Here, I'm going to show you how you can use Category Selector to zoom the map to the latest earthquake. By sorting my category selector to events time, I can configure this in descending order so I can focus upon the latest event. For the line item text, I have the option to use an identifier such as location. This provides information about the feature selected. I will give this selector name a label of AutoZoom. This is a live action that I, that I will add later on. Or if we simply want to toggle on and off the AutoZoom capability, I can change the displayed type to button. Here I can relabel the identifier on and enable an off option. In the actions, I can now target the zoom action so that the map will zoom to the latest earthquake. When the dashboard loads, the category selector will keep the most recent earthquake selected. To stop this, the user can click off. Another advanced setting is map actions. These can be used to sync together the different elements of your map, for instance, to only show information that is displayed within the map extent. So I will show you how I've configured this. If you go into your map element and under map actions, you'll need to add a filter to all of the elements within your map. Here, if I zoom into my map, 
The elements around my map will automatically update based on what is visible in the map extent. Another great example of map actions is this police department crime dashboard. If I select burglary, you'll notice that the other elements of the dashboard will dynamically update. The final advanced setting that I'd like to bring to your attention today is URL parameters. A URL parameter is a property that is added to your dashboard's configuration by its author that can be used to trigger actions. In doing so, URL parameters allow the dashboard to be displayed in a prescribed way. My example will predefine magnitude. This may be useful to a researcher studying patterns of earthquakes with a magnitude of 5. To set up my URL parameters, I go into the dashboard settings and there is a tab available for this. Here I have defined my feature parameter to read the magnitude field. I've also added a filter to all of my other dashboard elements so that when a magnitude is specified, the dashboard will filter accordingly. Now, in my dashboard URL, I must add a hash to append the parameter to the URL mag, the name given to my parameter, and then the value of my parameter, which I'm going to choose 5. Here you can see my dashboard is only showing earthquakes with magnitude of 5. Now we will explore some of the new functionalities of the beta release. The ArcGIS Dashboards beta is the upcoming version of ArcGIS dashboards. It is built on the ArcGIS API for JavaScript 4.x and enables dashboard authors to take advantage of multiple enhancements that have been introduced across the ArcGIS platform. This new release offers us improved overall map performance, improved usability for percentile summary statistics and count, as well as support for RGB and HSL formats for color input. It also offers us support for Arcade. In this section, I'll be focusing on Arcade and then touching on some of the other capabilities too. So, what is Arcade? Arcade is a portable, lightweight and secure expression language written for use in the ArcGIS platform. You may be familiar with using it to author advanced symbols or pop-ups. But for the first time within the application level in ArcGIS Online, you can now use it to author arcade expressions directly into ArcGIS dashboards for both the list and the indicator elements, enabling customization of how data points are rendered. Within these elements, arcade can be used for conditional formatting, value conversions, and more. Here is a dashboard I have enhanced with arcade. The key improvements here are the changes in background colour to the indicators and the additional feature information in our list. These draw your attention to new areas of the dashboard and have unlocked additional details. If I jump over to the dashboard we made earlier, I will show you how I configured both the list and the indicator elements. To enable Arcade within indicators, navigate to the indicator tab. In this example, we are going to declare a colour variable. But first, we need to set a default background colour, so I'm going to do that now. Then we create an if statement to override the default colour when the earthquake count is above zero. When this condition is met, the new colour will override the default. But to put this into action, I need to uncomment the background colour property. Then I can assign it back to the background colour variable I designed, defined earlier. Here you can see the background colour has dynamically updated. A second interesting use is that we can also use the arcade expression to display icons. To add an icon, navigate to the bottom here. You can select from a list of pre-configured icons, or you have the option to customise your own. I'm going to select one that represents earthquakes.
To apply this icon to my indicator, I need to uncomment the icon name property and assign it back to my icon. Here you can see it has been automatically added. I also have the option to configure the icons to dynamically change based on the threshold we defined earlier. To do this, I need to add my second icon. Then I can update the if statement that I defined earlier to incorporate my icon change. Here you can see that has now updated. Next, I'm going to show Arcade and Lists. You can enable the Arcade option under the List tab. In our Earthquakes data layer, we have the information of whether or not an earthquake was underwater, and thus a tsunami. This information is currently expressed as a one or blank under the field named Tsunami. Here you can see that in place as I have added it to my line item template. As it currently stands, this one is not very informative. To improve this, we can use an arcade expression to return a text field of tsunami dependent on whether there is a value of one populating the field. Here I can enable arcade and submit an if statement I prepared earlier. This if statement states that if the value of the tsunami field is equal to 1, then to return the word tsunami. To append this statement to my list, we will need to add the expression we have just created. Here you can see the list is now presenting the word tsunami. In addition, we can also configure the background colour to change to red if there is an earthquake with a magnitude greater than 7.5. This has automatically been applied, however, you cannot currently see this in action as there are fortunately no current earthquakes of this magnitude. Therefore, if I temporarily change this value to 4.5, you will now see that the background colour updates. Another example of dashboards harnessing the new capabilities is this US Air Quality Dashboard. The indicators for sites reporting PM2.5 and sites reporting ozone are configured to count based on whether the field is populated or empty, thus returning corresponding pollutant information or not. A final example is the Fire Accreditation Dashboard showing percentile statistics. There are three components of a fire call timeline. This is dispatch time, turnout time and travel time. All indicators have been set to the 90th percentile with a fixed value KPI as reference. These indicators are helpful in answering questions like which portions of the call time are meeting our goals and are there any weaknesses in call response timeline. Using the new capabilities in ArcGIS dashboards, you'll be able to better unlock information and create more effective dashboards. To bring today's session to an end, I hope you now feel confident with how to get started with ArcGIS dashboards, understand some of the new beta capabilities and have learnt how to author simple arcade expressions to better present and unlock further data in your dashboard. Thank you for listening.